You sounded pretty desperate on the phone, intern. That's why I brought my best set of wheels. What do you need to be help with it? Who is that? Yeah, that's kind of what I called you about. I'm not sure who he is, and I'm not sure how long he's been here for. Wait, he was here before you got here? So why does he have a dart zone on me? I don't know. Over here. I think he spotted us. I think he's coming over here. Hi guys, I'm new here. I, 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 I just got here. I mean, I'm new here. I don't really know what I'm doing. How did you even get in here? The gate was locked. And who are you anyways? Oh yeah, uh, the gate was actually not locked. It was wide open. So I just, I came in. My name is Siren. I'm new here. I don't know what I'm doing. Wait, but where did you get that blaster from? How did, how did you get that? This? Oh yeah, I found it in some guy's office who had like dart something written on it. I mean, I was just taking notes. I just took it. I'm new here. I don't know what I'm doing. My name is Siren. Wait, what? That belongs to John Dart Zone. You can't just take it. But there was no price tag on it. It was free. What do you mean it was free? You can't just take it. It belongs to... Why do you keep saying your name is Siren and you don't know what you're doing? You've said that multiple times now. I mean, I was just taking notes because I'm new, but I'm going to be better than you and I'm going to be better than Dark Zone. I like the colors of your bicycle. Can I take them? I mean, I, I highly doubt that, but I mean, I, I guess you can take my bicycle color scheme. I'm going on break. Nine months later, the Blink was born. Actually, probably more like three days later, but I digress. Yeah, that intro wasn't really a joke. You're going to see a lot of comparisons to the Omnia throughout the course of this video, because this blaster really is just a better Omnia in pretty much every single way except the stock attachment point. But really, when it comes to the biggest problems the Omnia had, what kind of comparison even is that? But the Blink is a 2024 release out of Siren Blasters. What the heck is that? We'll get into that later in this video. But all you really need to know before we start this video is that this is a short dart magazine fed fully automatic kind of smart flywheel blaster that costs 90 freaking dollars. And it comes with this fancy magazine that I actually really like a whole heck of a lot and I will explain why later. But first, we gotta start with the design. There's some things that I really like about the design, and there's some things that I just can't stand. What I really like is the color scheme. This dark black, bright white, and extraordinarily hot neon green is one of the best color schemes I've ever seen on any blaster. It's iconic, it looks like a toy, but it's also able to be taken very seriously. The printing that says Siren and Blink on it is actually printed, and it's printed on both sides. And the only issue I found with this is the fact that the Blink on the left side of the blaster is kind of fuzzy, and it very clearly wasn't printed properly. You can see a lot of grain and noise in the printing, which does not appear on the right side of the blaster. But even then, that is a very tiny detail that you're not going to notice unless you look at the blaster extremely closely. On the other side of the blaster specifically, it says do not open while in use on the jam door. There's no reason to print that there, but they printed it anyway because they felt like it. And they also marked the dials depending on the FPS and the speed. I will get into this thing shortly because this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Again, they really could have gotten away with not printing those things on it, but they did it anyway. That's so cool. What I don't like about the design is the fact that it's having an identity crisis. And what do I mean by that? Have you ever heard of the Uncanny Valley where it's like the realism goes up and up and up and it looks really good and then suddenly it looks really creepy for a second and then it looks really really good again this blaster sits in the nerf version of the uncanny valley when it comes to size and proportions let me give you an example this is a strife it's kind of a sidearm sized blaster and you can see that the blink is way bigger than the strife for a sidearm sized blaster however if i get a rapid strike you can also see that it is way smaller than the rapid strike as a primary size blaster and it's small in a really bad way as you can see the 
the grips are pretty much lined up. It's got way too short of a stock area and it's got way too small of a foregrip area. So there's no real way to use it as a primary. So what are your options with this thing? You can either treat it like a hip firing blaster and hold it with one hand like this. And then you put your other hand up here awkwardly and then use it kind of like a heavy gunner blaster, which doesn't feel right because of how tiny the thing is. Or you can use it like the world's biggest sidearm and hold it at arm's length using this thing as a wrist brace, which also doesn't feel right because when you put a magazine in this nugget, the front end of it sticks out really far and it's just this massive chunk of plastic in front of the grip. Granted, it feels really good, but it looks ridiculous and honestly, it doesn't feel right. What about the ergonomics? As we moved on from the design, we go on to the ergonomics. This blaster just has a main grip. It doesn't really have a foregrip and it definitely doesn't have a stock. And this main grip feels very small, but really, really good. When your blaster ends up having a small grip, that is not an excuse to completely do away with the ergonomics, which is where a lot of companies just give up. They say, ah, oh, well, the grip is small and dumb anyway. Let's just give up and focus on everything else. Siren said no. No, we're doing the grip good anyway, even if it is tiny. The bottom end is bigger than the top end. It's got a nice ridge right here that perfectly is a good dovetail. It's got kind of a finger troil that is built in with the rev trigger, and it's got just enough space down here for your two fingers, or even three if you have larger sized hands. You can see I can fit three fingers down there. It is a very, very nice grip that perfectly fits the size and ergonomic feel of this blaster, as well as the balancing. The grip just makes it feel great. So how does this blaster work? Well, first of all, you flip the thing over and you've got these two big dials right here. What do these things do? Well, if you couldn't tell by the markings on them, this is an FPS tuning dial and this is a rate of fire tuning dial. Both of these dials are completely analog. What this means is gradually as you turn the dials, the FPS or rate of fire will analog style increase. There's no set intervals that these mechanisms are set to that you just kind of automatically jump up one and down one. It is completely analog. As you tune it up, it will gradually increase. You can even hear it with the flywheels if you turn on the FPS dial and you gradually turn it up while revving the blaster. I obviously can't demonstrate the rate of fire dial because it just changes how many times the pusher goes around per second, so there's no real way to determine that it's analog without actually getting a feel for the blaster and seeing it for yourself, but you just gotta take my word for it. These two dials are both analog, and they both feel extremely good. They've got just the right amount of tension on them for you to get a very nice, tiny, precise feel on them without it being too sloppy or feeling loose in any way. The dials are tight, and they're well built into the side of the blaster. Well done with the dial quality and well done with the fact of making them analog. But anyway, back on topic. First, you move the FPS dial until it clicks, which turns on the blaster, and you turn it up to your desired FPS and then your desired rate of fire. Then you take your mag, you put it in like this, you rev up the blaster, and then you just hold down the trigger to fire darts. What you just saw was max FPS and max darts per second. However, you can tune the darts per second back to about four or five rounds per second, and you can tune the FPS down from about 200 feet per second down to about 150 feet per second. So you can flex what types of games you can use this blaster at without even opening the thing up. It, that's so freaking cool. You don't even have to reset the blaster or disable it like you have to do with a Diana. You can actively tweak these things in the middle of an event. Like if it goes a little bit too high or a little bit too low, you can just change it and tweak it. Like just... I, I got, I'm getting off topic. I'm, I'm getting off topic. What about the triggers? Let's talk about the triggers. The rev trigger feels really, really good. It's kind of heavy, but it's got just the right amount of pull to it and is very, very smooth. It's also very nicely built onto the blaster and feels very strong and very, very well done. The main trigger, on the other hand, is really, really sloppily put in. It's really loose for some reason and rocks side to side constantly, and it just doesn't feel very well put in, as well as having an awkward spongy pull to it that just doesn't feel very right. It feels like sometimes it's gonna work and one of these days it's just not going to work properly, but it hasn't failed on me yet, so I don't really know. What about mag insertion and release? First of all, mag insertion is really... 
God, it's kind of heavy, but it is pretty good. It's a very, very nicely done magwell that is slightly flared. So you don't have to be exactly precise with the magwell, but it isn't really flared enough for you to notice it. So I would be careful with it anyways. As for the mag release, it is a very nice feeling mag release that has just the right amount of trigger resistance to it to not feel that bad. It's not too heavy, but it's just the right amount of weight to where you're not gonna accidentally disengage the mag release by taking your index finger off the trigger. Yes, it's this style of mag release. But funny enough, because there's no trigger guard, you can literally just move your middle finger up and hit it like that anyways. Should you do that? No, but you can do it. Or you can just reach up and hit it with your thumb, but that doesn't really feel right because of how far away it is from the magwell, so I don't really know what to tell you guys. And really quickly, this is the magazine that it comes with, which has a feature that could be seen as really cool or completely useless depending on who you are. It has these markings that are built onto the mag release, which accurately tell you how many darts are currently in your magazine that go up to 15 and then stop when you get to 20 because it's a maximum of 20 darts and you can just count down from 15 to see how many there are. This is a really cool concept in theory that should make mag loading easier. I say in theory and I say should because in all actuality, it doesn't really work that well. You see, darts aren't completely rigid. They tend to do this. They tend to squish and they tend to squish a lot. And as they squish, these numbers no longer line up perfectly with the tally marks anymore. So you can't actually see if you have five darts in or six or 15 darts in or 16 or 20 or 22. So unless you're using this thing with a springer and you're using like Azure Dragons or something with it, which ironically enough, you're not gonna be using with this because of how high the crush is, you're not gonna get much usage out of the ammo counting thing on there. And it's more or less just going to be a kind of estimate as to how many darts are in it, which is still better than nothing, but still kind of useless when it isn't exactly perfect. So you guys may have noticed the USB-C port on the side of this blaster. This is why I love this thing way too much. This is a 3S LiPo battery. This is another 3S LiPo battery. What's the difference here? Ignore the stylings. Simply put, this 3S LiPo has a small chip connected between the positive, negative, and balancing terminals that doesn't allow the battery to overcharge or over discharge ever, and is connected with a USB-C. While this battery is just a raw 3S that you can plug into anything. What's the big significance here? Simply put, because this battery has the safety controls built in and has this unique connecting system, it is completely proprietary for the Strife X. While this battery you can use in anything, but is substantially more dangerous and you have to get an expensive charger to use it, and you just have to be a lot more careful with this battery. So, what is the significance with these two batteries and why am I bringing them up? This blaster combines the function of both of these in the best way possible by basically they just took a whole bunch of notes from the Strife X battery and then improved upon it. The Blink features a standard 3S, just like this one. In fact, it's almost the exact same size. It's a little bit smaller, but it fits right up in here and you access it just by taking this one screw off and pulling the back part of this off and you can get to the battery. It has an XT60 port and a balancing port that you plug them down into the blaster. They are secured inside the body of the blaster and can't be moved or tampered with. And the safety control chip that I mentioned earlier is located inside of the blaster and not inside of the individual battery. And that USB-C port connects to that safety control chip, which also connects to the rest of the internals and to the battery itself when you plug it in. What does this mean? You can use any 3S you want as long as it fits in here with all the advantages of the Strife X battery without the disadvantage of having it be a proprietary 3S. The 3S in here is just a regular 3S. You can use it in anything and you are not limited to the 3S the blaster comes with. You can maintenance this battery. You can take it out and use it in other blasters. You could do whatever you want with the 3S, but you still have all the advantages of what the Strife X battery does with none of the disadvantages. You can charge this blaster in the car on the way to your local event. And by extension, you could have this thing as the world's simplest safe 3S charger without even needing to use the blaster. Think about this. You take your 3S, you plug it into the nugget, you plug the USB-C into the nugget, you plug it into the wall, and then the nugget does all the hard work for you. The red light turns on when it's charging and it turns off once it's charged to about 80%. You don't overcharge your battery, you don't over discharge your battery, and the battery is always safe when it's plugged in and when it's not plugged in. You don't have to worry about anything. You've got the 3S and you can just use it. 
It's actually such a good mechanism that I would argue that alone is worth looking into this blaster, even if you think you already have everything that you could possibly ever want or need in your collection. That is just so good. It's genius. It's really good. Let's see this thing fire. My god, this room's a mess. Max FPS, max RPM. Max FPS, minimum RPM. Minimum RPS, or minimum FPS, minimum RPM. Minimum FPS, max RPM. These are my darts. Just take my word for it. Yeah, one more at max both just for fun. So the firing demo looked really good. And I mean, I have drawn a lot of comparisons to the Omnia here with the fact that they are both fully automatic mag fed blasters. And this one has a selector switch. This one has an analog tuning thing. They both cost $90. You're probably wondering when is the other shoe gonna drop? The catastrophic, please don't get this thing. You should never look into one of these no matter what feature that this blaster has is nothing. I actually can't find any reason why this blaster is a bad value or even a bad blaster in general, especially for the price. This blaster actually just puts in more effort than the Omnia did. Way more effort. So much more effort that this thing is completely replacing the Omnia in my arsenal. Literally, there's only two problems that I can think of with this blaster that actually affect the ability to use this blaster, and even then, it's not that big of a deal. The first one being the Identity Crisis style design. It can be confusing to figure out how you're supposed to hold this thing and run it, and the other one is a bit of an issue that I haven't brought up yet. The fact that every single time you take off the jam door, it tells you no, and it just completely comes out. Every single time. I cannot get the thing to stay in when I try and open the jam door. It always falls out every time and you have to fiddle with it to put back in. That's it. That's the only problem I can think of. This blaster is just good. It's just well done. When you compare this blaster to the Omnia, which you can very easily make comparisons to because they're appealing to the exact same market, it's almost not even a fair comparison. The Blink literally takes every single good fact every single good factor about the Omnia and makes it better while taking all the stuff that didn't work with the Omnia and completely getting rid of it. The Blink has none of the issues that the Omnia does. It's got good switches, good motors, a good mechanism. Everything about it is good. Everything about it just works the way it's supposed to flawlessly. The plastic quality is amazing. This thing is built like a truck. It feels damn near indestructible. While the Omnia has questionable plastic quality that squishes in in some places, it kind of rattles around. When you shake it, this one, nothing. You can hear the 3S rattling around and that's it. All the internals are sound and well put in there. It's just genuinely a really really good product. It doesn't even feature Runaway on the pusher. Like, it just, it just works. What do I think of the Blink? Oh my god, I'm in love with this thing. If you are in the market for a half dark compatible, Talon Mag compatible, fully automatic blaster, this, in my opinion, is the best go-to that you can possibly go for that costs less than $100. I would argue that this is probably even more usable for a lot of people than something like the Worker Nightingale 2.0, because this comes with the battery and it works with Talon Mags. You aren't forced to use the Nightingale Mags and you are able to use all the conventional mags that you would traditionally use and it's cheaper than the nightingale too and it's got the analog switches that i just can't get enough of the only thing that i genuinely would say is better on the omnia is the fact that i like the main trigger better that's it if you want this blaster i will link it in the description below and i highly recommend taking a look at this thing if this is the style of blaster that you are interested in thank you guys for watching bye